What is up, folks? Welcome to episode 11 of season two of the Game Show Speak podcast. I'm your host, Dante Pittman, and of course, and of course, my co captain for this ride is Michael Bombardier. Good evening, folks. Welcome into another Game Show Speak podcast. So glad to have you with us on board. Get your hands on your buzzers. We got some topics for you. Yep. Yep. Uh, before we get to it, uh, Turd will not be here with us today. He has some fam. He has, you know, take care of family and all that. So that's respectable. Him, be safe. Respectable, respectable. Be safe. So be safe out there, Turd. Please don't hurt nobody. Because we don't want because we don't want that to happen in our own. No, no, no. All right. So all right. Here we go. Sharing screen now. Okay. All right. We're gonna start off with Queen of the Universe being pushed to June. Uh, Paramount Plus today revealed a new premiere date for the second season of Queen of the Universe. Hosted by five-time BAFTA TV award winner Graham Norton, the new season will premiere exclusively on the service Friday, June 2nd in the U.S. and Canada. The series will additionally premiere on Saturday, June 3rd in the U.K., Latin America, Italy, France, and Germany. Queen of the Universe follows the world's most talented drag queens as they battle out for global domination and countries go head-to-head spotlighting their top talent. Each episode will feature the world's fiercest queens as they debut a new musical performance in front of a live audience and the pop diva panel of judges in the hopes of being crowned the queen of the universe. This season, global star Mel B joins the returning judges, including platinum selling recording artist, free time Emmy Award producer, and judge of RuPaul's Drag Race, Michelle Visage, multi Emmy and Grammy nominee Vanessa Williams, and American drag superstar Trixie Mattel. Uh, the Queen of the Universe Season 2 cast includes Aura Internal, Chloe V, Jazelle Royale, Love Masisi, Maxi, uh, Melissa Skunt, uh, Miss Sister Mistretta, uh, Taija, Taija Brava, Trevor Ashley, and Viola. Mm. I mean, you've seen the show, have you? Well, you've seen. Ru- I have. I have not. I know Patrick Murphy. Oh, it's Jesse. Hi, Jesse. What's up, my man? Oh, it's Jesse. It's Jesse James. James. What's up, my? What's up, my man? Anyway, I know Patrick Murphy uh, loves the show. Watch the show, so he will be pleased. By the way, shout out to him for GSC Studios. We appreciate you. Yep. Game Show Party Studios. Appreciate yep. Yep. Patrick Murphy, a delightful human being, by the way. <laughs> All right. Next topic here, we have Game Show Network locking off to the Shutter app. A uh, cord cutter news that is reporting that starting in April 2023, the free Game Show Network app is going away, and they're directing everyone to cable TV. All right. In a statement posted on the website, Game Show Network announced this change starting April 1st, 2023. Game Show Network streaming app will no longer be available. We know that many of you have enjoyed streaming your favorite game shows. While the app is no longer be accessible, you will still be able to enjoy all your favorite game shows through your cable providers. Visit GameShowNetwork.com to find which channel we're on using Channel Finder. And if you're looking for a specific game show, you can use our Content Finder tool. Thank you for your loyalty and be part of our family. No worry yet on if this will affect the Game Show Central, a sister decor that streams for you on Pro TV, Plex, and the Roku channel. The Game Show Central feed is different from the Game Show Network, but carries some of the same shows. Michael, your thoughts on this? Wow. And yes, wow. The past few years, Game Show Network has been taken away from Spectrum. Mm-hmm. Now, I would love it if Game Show Network came back to Spectrum. Mm-hmm. So, so that mean, so that would mean I would have a fresh start with it. But Ooh. this is a low blow, in my opinion. 
This is a low blow. Okay. All right. Uh, people watching people. Alex Horn and the Taskmaster team are pioneering a new comedy game show for Channel 4 British Comedy Guy Reports. Feature, featuring audience interaction, people watching as comedians trying to match fun facts to the people in the room. A casting call notice from the non broadcast pilot shot in London in January by Taskmaster director Andy Devonshire. A ask for prospective participants is there more to you than meets the eye? If you ever wondered what strangers think of you, now's the chance to find out. The People Watching Forum, produced by the program making on my horns, management company Avalon Television, start from starstruck and not going out, has been in development for at least two years. All right, a taster was made in the summer of 2021 with Mawan Rizwan hosting after the music good musical comic and juice star appeared on series 10 of Taskmaster the previous year. However, BCG understands that Rizwan did not host the recent run through. If commissioned for a series, people watch it with Lewis. Further solidifies Horn really Horn's relationship with channel 4.1. Oh wow. This sounds interesting, to say the least. All right, so we'll move on. Uh, we got to get sad. Uh, Christian Borkland, a longtime member of the Family Feud game show producing team, has passed away on March 5th of Sepis after un undergoing a kidney, tr kidney transplant. All right, she started as a production assistant with Richard Dawson hosted. She also had risen to co executive produced by the Steve Harvey era. Well, oh man, this is sad. Our thoughts and players will go out to her and her family, of course. Absolutely. I mean, what was your favorite moment of her of her run on Feud? Of her run on Feud. Hmm. Woman, what? Wow. I mean, to have the ability to work with most of the hosts in the Family Feud era. In Family Feud, like Richard Dawson, Ray Combs, Lee Anderson, Steve Harvey. That's, yeah. it, that's an incredible achievement. That is the fact that we've lost that. We've lost her broke her heart, you know. Yeah. Man, this I hope they honor her on a future episode of Family Feud. Yeah, they gotta do something. All right. All right. The wheel topic is yours, Michael. Thank you very much. Welcome to the wheel online while while New Jersey residents may not have the pleasure of meeting Wheel of Fortune's Pat Jack or Vanna White, fans of the hit television show will soon get the chance to play the popular game in the palm of their hands. On Wednesday, March 8th, BetMGM announced the launch of a Wheel of Fortune online casino in New Jersey in association with IGT. Wheel of Fortune is the first brand-led online casino in North America, but it certainly won't be the last. Wheel of Fortune, which is currently airing its 40th season, is a staple in most American households. The Wheel of Fortune-themed slot games has been in, have been in casinos for over two decades. But this expansion marks the first time the brand theme game hits the digital gambling world. Adam Greenblatt, Chief Executive Officer of BetMGM, said, We are thrilled to bring Wheel of Fortune Online Casino to players in New Jersey where they can and now play for real money and experience the excitement of the beloved game show on their phones. We have a great alliance with, with Wheel of Fortune and IGT and look forward to offering our players innovative and, and diverse selections of gaming options. 
and I'm going to finish on that and say, this is something that the New Jersey guys have been waiting for in a, in a, in a long time, I think. What mm-hmm. do you think of it? Oh. Wow, wow, wow. That's a big milestone right there. Woo. Can't move. Can't wait for them to have some fun with Wheel Fortune, of course. All right. All right. This is new one here. Um, this is a new one here. Uh, Get Blitz. Uh, it's a rarely distributor or most of formats, which are new game show format. Bingo Blitz, port- producing partnership with TV technology company Game Changer at Xbox MIP TV market. In the show, contestants, two contestants answer trivia questions in 60 second periods. For every correct answer, a number is drawn from a bingo machine. Every, every number earns more money. Every contestant scores a bingo. They win cash. Moza and Game Changer have previously partnered on game show Family Piggy Bank for Portugal's RTP1. Okay. Now, I have not heard of this show. Have you, Michael? Me neither. Mm, all right. All right, moving on. Uh, the prices right among shows are moving as TV City remodels. All right, it's the end of an era for the prices right. After taping at Los Angeles' famed t- television series, Television City Compound since its premiere in 1972, the classic CBS game show will relocate to a new facility next season. Per deadline, a looming $1.25 billion renovation, the television series will force prices right to move to Haven Studios and their buyers Glendale when, when it begins production on season 52 later this summer. In addition, it's understood that Let's Make a Deal, which tapes in Silmar, will also make the move to Haven at least Fremantle as an investor with a long-term lease. All right. In light of Hack- Hackman Capital Partners' plans to undergo a major renovation at Television City, the time has come to move television's longest running game show, The Price is Right, into a new home, said Suzanne Lopez, CEO of Fremantle. Uh, while we bid a fond farewell to this cultural landmark, we are excited to say that we will be moving to a brand new state of the art facility at Haven Studios. We can't wait to have our friends come on down to this new facility. We'll begin production of the next season this summer. Other celebrity, other series that currently share television series, including CBS Soaps, The Young and the Restless, and The Bold and the Beautiful. CBS is soon to conclude the late, late show with James Corden. ABC's American Idol and Disney Plus is dancing where the stars are finalizing their own arrangements. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I mean, this was out of nowhere for us. Yeah, definitely out of nowhere. After over 50 years of being in Television City. Wow. It's all going to be over. Woo, boy. I know, I know. But, you know, times have changed. Things will have to change, you know. Now we got to get sad again. Uh, Robert Blake and Harry DeLinter uh, have both passed away. So let's start with Robert Blake. Um, He died today of, he died on the 9th of heart disease. He was 89. He appeared with his first wife on Tattletales. All right, and yes, he was the, the now Henry Winter, 
has passed away um, from mesothelioma. Mesothelioma. He was 73 years old. I mean, he was the founder of one of the first production companies in the lens, IDTV. Um, he's the guy that bought Lingo and shipped it worldwide. Yep. Because he acquired the rights to Lingo in 1989 and failed there during the 1980s, but became a great success in the Netherlands and abroad. Uh, he will return to format to America, serving as executive producer from 2002 to 2004. So my prop, my thoughts and prayers go out too. All right, I'll be right back. So. I guess I'm going to take over from here. Uh, let's see what we're hitting. Okay. BBC One heads to the finish line. BBC One Daytime has commissioned a brand new quiz show, the brand new quiz show finish line to air later this year. Made from the Belfast, Northern Ireland by Potato. Part of ITV Studios and Nice One Productions, this competitive show will see contestants battle it out on an iconic racetrack set. And as they speed along the studio floor in a, a series of thrilling quick fire quiz races and all that matters is they cross the finish line. Filming will start later this month in Northern Ireland and applications for contestants are open until March 10th, 2023. BBC Data, I am commissioning the editor. Alex McLeod comments, "We are. I am so excited that we are bringing a new quiz format to the schedule. Then this new show will be packed full of excitement, anticipation, and we'll have audiences on the edge of their seats. And we're chomping at the bit to announce who the hosts will be. This is going to be right. an exciting time for BBC One. I had to take over that topic for you. All right, what did I miss here? BBC One. Oh, the BBC One." I took okay, over for thank that one. You. Hmm. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. What do you think that. on this? Um, what do I think about it? Hmm. So, let's So this is basically like um hurdles on the price is right when Bob was hosting it. But trivia style. Hmm. What's interesting Let's see if we can try it out here uh, More on Love is Blind Season 4 Alright, meet the Love is Blind sing Single 4 singles who are looking to find the one Get a glimpse into their personalities and what they're looking for in a potential partner for the new season premieres on March 24th, only on Netflix. Singles who want to be loved for who they are rather than they look like have signed up for a less conventional roast of modern day in Seattle, and they hope to meet the person they want for the rest of their lives with, without ever having seen them. With no distractions from the outside world, the singles talk to a stream of potential love interest. When a meaningful connection is made, they propose and then lay their eyes on their fiancé for the first time. Engaging back into the real world as the couple plans their wedding day and will quickly discover that they're going to turn their emotional connection to a physical one before the fast approaching ceremony. Hosted by Nick and Vanessa Lache, this addictive series will uncover where it looks. It's Lache. Lache, thank you. I, I think I said Lache already. No, it's Lache. You said Lache. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Whether looks, race, or age do matter, or if love really is blind. Meet the singles Amber, April, Ava, Bill, Bliss, Brandy, Brett, Chelsea, Chris, Connor, Irina, Irina, uh, Jack, Jacqueline, Jimmy, Josh, Josh, JP, Juan, Cassia, Casia, Kendra, Kwame, Marshall, Micah, Molly. Monica, Paul, Quincy, Ryland, Tiffany, Wendy, Sack. Not gonna get to it. Woo! 
I mean, you've heard of this show, right, Michael? Uh, I think I'm gonna say one thing to you. Don't assume, don't assume that I that I've heard of it. I know, but I just want to let. I just figured you seen some already. No, I haven't. Nah, I thought so. Hey, Michael, did you like Hot Wheels as a kid? Never heard of it. Michael! <laughs> You've never seen hot, a Hot Wheels toy? Never owned one. Wow, bro. Yo. Yeah, mic drop. <laughs> when Turk gets back, when Turk gets back next next Tuesday, we will we will show you what Hot Wheels is. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> well, what uh, Rutledge Wood drives Hot Wheels. Um, NBC has ordered the series Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge, a car makeover competition based on the toy cars. Uh, he will be the host and judge. There will be 10 episodes. The show will see Hot, Wheel, Hot Wheels superfans toy a toy car from their past into life-size Hot Wheels of their dreams. The member will see their car become an official Hot Wheels diecast car. Everyone remembers their first car, their life experiences they had, and the friends who came along for the ride. Hot Wheels is a legendary brand that's created a space for imaginations to run free. Uh, said Corey Henson, Senior Vice President of Unscripted Program at NBC Universal Television and Streaming, our prolific partners at In, in the Most Shine, North America, and Mattel created larger than life family viewing with edge and humor, all led by car enthusiasts, but whose creativity, credibility, and passion for Hot Wheels makes them the perfect person to drive this wild competition. Uh, each episode will invite two Hot Wheels lovers into the chrome zone to dress, with, dress home an ordinary tour if you to an extraordinary Hot Wheels creation. All right, working alongside a team of automotive, automotive wizards known as the Carpool, uh, the contestants will create their designs and deck out garages. Judges include Hertrek, Hurt, Eugene Jr., and Dada Eskek. I, the, <gasps> excuse me. The winner of each episode will take home $25,000 and the chance to get into the finale where three finalists will transform another car and host a winning $50,000 and the opportunity to have their design made into a Hot, Wheel, Hot Wheels diecast car. Now, I am a fan of Hot Wheels. And I've owned one Hot, Hot Wheels. So, this might be in, in, just interesting. To say the least. And of course, I gotta get sad again. Uh, Mark Pilgrim, uh, video, radio, and t t TV presenter, has passed away after battling stage four lung cancer. He was 53. Uh, he hosted Big Brother South Africa in 2001. Followed by, followed by a stint of hostess Big Brother Africa in 2003. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is sad. He was the center on Hot 102.7 FM from Monday to Saturday. Uh, damn, damn. My my thoughts and prayers go out to the Pilgrim family at this time. All right, next topic here. Uh, Greg James to chart rise and fall. Uh, BBC Radio One presenter Greg Ch Greg James is host is to host Channel Four reality series Rise and Fall from the Traders Maker Studio Lambert. James hosts BBC Radio One Breakfast, one of the most listened to UK radio shows. Rise and Fall represents one of his few t t TV hosting gigs. He will oversee the actual Channel Four's latest biggest big entertainment event with sixteen ordinary British people from all like 
walks of life. <laughs> Walks of life begin the game as equals, which soon find themselves either in a position of power as a ruler or tired of the powers as a grafter. While the rulers live in the ultimate penthouse, the grafters must survive in basic conditions in the basement. Not much like life, those in power will be responsible for making decisions that affect those who have not. Hmm. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Got the TV ratings. We're going to start Mondays. All right, Mondays. Uh, Mondays TV ratings. NBC's The Voice led Monday of both tour viewers and the demo with CBS and Rio and both. The Voice opened season 23 with 6.3 million total viewers and the 0.7 demo rating. Right on part was far opener. Leaning out of that, Quantum Leap inch up to its best audience since January 2nd. 2.1 million viewers while posting its fifth 0.3 rating out of the past six episodes. Fox's 911 returned to from its three month break to 4.8 million viewers in a 0.6 rating down just a space from its fall finale. Fantasy Island followed with a typical 2 million 0.2. Alright, ABC's The Bachelor 2.9 million 6.0.6 6 was steady. Uh, the Good Doctor did his best audience in four episodes, 3.3 million, in its seventh straight 0 0.3 rating. Alrighty. Alright, Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday's ratings when CBS and ABC rewind mode, NBC's Night Court, and NBC's The Voice tied from the demo win, where the latter also copied Tuesday's biggest audience. Night Court, with 3.8 million viewers in the 0 0.5 frame, grew in audience while steady in the demo. American Auto drew its Best audience in five episodes, 2.2 million, while posting its fifth straight 0 0.3 rating. The Voice, 5 million, 0 0.5, was down shortly from Monday's premiere, after which that's my jam to return to 3 million and a 0 0.4. Uh, Fox's 911 Lone Star, 4 million, 0 0.4, added eyeballs, but dipping the demo. The Q's rose to its best audience in three episodes, 2.1 million, 0 0.3, and also tipped up in the demo. Uh, the CW's yet to be renewed, the Winchester's. Ended its freshman with 454,000 viewers, down 3% from last week's premium audience, despite decreased competition. And its 12 0.1 rating of the 13th 13 episode season. All right, Wednesday's ratings here. In the latest TV show, in Wednesday's ratings, when NBC's hashtag was Chicago Rewind Mode, CBS's Survivor and Fox's The Masked Singer tied for the Wednesday demo win, while the, with the former also delivering the night's largest audience. Survivor, with 4.8 million viewers and a 0.6 rating, built on its premiere episode but dipped on the demo. The already renewed lingo, 2 million 0.2, returned to series lows, while True Lies, 2.5 million 0.2, slipped 22% at 37% from its premiere, now having a softer lead in. The Mad Singer 3.9 million 0.6 was steady. Farmer Wants a Wife 2.4 million 0.3 sharply improved on Special Forces average audience while pretty much matching its demo number. <clears throat> the CW's The Flash 580k 0.1 rose to a season high in viewers while steady in demo, whereas Bubble Show Kung Fu 390k 0.1 dipped just 5% of viewers, slash was steady in the demo with a season finale. ABC's The Connors, 3.6 million, 0 0.4. The Goldbergs, 2.4 million, 0 0.3. Abbott, 2.7 million, 0 0.4. And A Million Little Danes, 1.8 million, 0 0.2. All added eyeballs while staying in the demo. Not Dead Yet, 2.1 million, 0 0.2. However, dipped for a second street, straight week to new lows. To <clears throat> Thursday's ratings. In Thursday's ratings, CBS's Young Sheldon that Thursday in both tour viewers and in the demo. Uh, Young Sheldon was 7.4 million total viewers in the 0 0.7 rating and goes 6.5 million 0 0.6. Both rose to the demo while So Help Me Todd, 4.5 million 0 0.3. In the conclusion of CSI Vegas' Silver Ink Killer arc, 3.3 million 0 0.3 were steady. ABC Station 19, 3.9 million, 0 0.5, and Grants, Grants Anatomy, 3.2 million, 0 0.4, both added a handful of eyeballs while staying in the demo. Alaska Daily dipped to an audience well, 2.5 million, while posting its fourth straight 0 0.2 rating. Fox's Next Level Chef, 1.8 million, 0 0.3, ticked down. 
Ammo controlled 1.3 million, 0.2, saw its first demo decline while slight volumes for a third straight week. Call me cap 1.2 billion, 0.2 was steady. <clears throat> Friday's ratings. This is not a rerun. All right, Friday's ratings. Fox's SmackDown was number one in the demo, while CBS's Blue Bloods and Fire Country verbally tied for the night's biggest audience. Friday night SmackDown, 2.1 million, 0.5, ticked down week to week. SWAT, 5 million, 0.4, Fire Country, 5.46 million, 0.4, and Blue Bloods, 5.47 million, 0.3, all dipped with the latter matching series low set last December 2nd. Uh, NBC's Lopez versus Lopez, 1.9 million, 0.2, was steady, while Grand Crew, 1.1 million, 0.1, slipped to new lows. ABC's the Shark, ABC Shark Tank, 3.5 million, 0.3, hit what appears to be an all-time demo low. And CW's Who's Line, 520K, 0.1, added some viewers. All righty. All right. And now oh, it's Jay Houston. Jay Houston. Hi, Jay. Mm -hmm. And now, go ahead, right. Michael. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is the moment you've all been waiting for. Mm -hmm. <sighs> all right. Sorry. Yes, we have another food host food chain, and today you'll be the host of the British adaptation of Family Feud. It is called Family Fortunes. Of course, we rules. Rule one, this is basically our opinion. Rule two, we're only counting one person's hosting tenure as one hosting tenure, even if they do two separate stints. And three, no counting guest hosts, of course. We don't think there was any guest hosts for this. Not a single guest host for Family Fortunes. Uh, you are... you. Your camera is lagging on my end. Camera's lagged. I mean, I should be fine. Can you see me now? Yeah, I can see it, but... When you try to, oh, okay, mm -hmm. now, okay, now I can see just fine. Oh, uh, that's great, great. Now we start with the, and of course we're going chronological order here. All right, let's start with number one from 1980 to 1983. Of course, he's a comedian. His name is Bob Monkhouse. The guy who did Golden Shot, uh, Full House, I believe. Yep, Bob's Full House. Celebrity Squares. Mm-hmm. Wipeout. Yes. Oh, man. All right. Easily number one. He's just so good at what he does. I have seen Family Fulgens. And it's a not bad of a show. I kind of like the theme. The theme gives me some good disco vibes. I don't know. Alrighty. Uh, so we'll put him at number one. So easily number one. So we'll put him at number one. Of course. Hold on, I'm just messaging Daniel something. Just one second here. All right. Let's continue on. Continuing on. Number two, from uh, 1983 to 1985, singer and entertainer Max Bygraves. This yeah. man is this man is famous for big money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Max Bygraves. So what are your yeah. thoughts on Max Bygraves? 
He's isn't he the one? Uh, isn't he the host that uh, that had the uh, the turkey contestant? Uh, yeah, I believe so. <laughs> and the big money portion, man. <laughs> The audience um, went ballistic. In that one contestant's turkey answer. They went so ballistic. Max Bridegraves couldn't even stop laughing. We'll put him at two. Yeah, we'll put him in two. All right. Now, number three, uh, the show returned on June 27, 1987 with, with Les Dennis. He did it for 15 years. Yep, 15 years. 15 years with one show. Mm-hmm. He knew how to do this. Yes, he does. He does it very well. And then, all right, so where do we want to put him? You know, as much as I hate to say this, above Bob Monkhouse. Wow, we're putting him at number one. Oh, boy. I can hear yeah. the game show community saying, you can't do that. Fight, fight us, we say. <laughs> And if they said that to me, here's my response. That's all I have to say to that. Moving on. All right. Then it was moved to a daytime daily slot on here. And it's hosted by Andy Collins. Okay, the daytime daily thing. It made no sense. To, to move it to five, to five days a week on a date on a daytime basis. It made no sense at all. Yeah, it didn't. Sorry, Andy. You're dead you're dead last. All right. Now we go to the two thousands, you know. Well, we're still in the 2000s. Still 2000s. And the guy who go on to host it for how long now he started hosting around? Well, wait a minute. Wait one second. Wasn't there... Didn't they use Family Fortunes for the UK Game Show Marathon? Yes, I believe so. This is... You know, this guy started in around... This around two thousand three. No, two, no, two thousand five. Two thousand five, and he did All Star Celebrity Fortunes from two thousand. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, you're doing the. Uh, hold on. Should we count him because they did the? Uh... Yeah, we should count uh, Vernon K. Because he did. Oh, uh, <laughs> you skipped. It. You I didn't skip any deck because they did the uh, because Family Fortunes was on their finale. Mm -hmm. I see where you're doing. I see where you're going with this. I see what you're going through. Mm. All right, I see where you're going. So David Beck is it's right. David Beck. And Deck. And Deck. And and Deck. Oh, okay. And and Deck. I about to say what? Okay. No, yeah. Yeah, they did so. Thomas Vultures for UK Game Show America. So So we want to put Ant and Deck. Okay. 
probably the greatest duo of UK hosts ever. In my opinion. Unless other people say otherwise. They went to the United States to do want to bet. Show was that show was under underrated. I, have I think seen it. It. Uh, it was on ABC. Mm, I might go check that out. There, uh, there are a couple. There's uh, if you if you go on YouTube and YouTube want to bet ABC. Uh, there is there is a, a challenge which features Anna and Deck introducing themselves. So, having said that, well, first of all, they should have asked they should have asked Ant and Deck instead of Ricky Lake to do the U.S. marathon. First of all, yeah, yeah. What, what were they what were they thinking when they brought Ricky Lake? Oh. They were thinking, oh, let's be moronic and do a talk show host. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, but as in terms of where do we place Ant and Deck? Yeah. Can you put, put uh, Les Dennis at number one, Ron Cass at two, Max at three, Andy Collins at four? I think they are, they are better than Andy Collins. Mm -hmm, yeah, so we'll so you want to play better at, than Andy Collins. So, so you want to play four. Like three, four. Okay, we're no three. Uh, so yeah, four. Yeah, four. Moving four. Andy down to five. Yeah, moving Andy down to five. We put yeah. Now we can do Vernon. Yes, the guy who hosted this uh, show, the actual show for two thousand in two thousand five, and still started all fam all star family fortunes from uh, two thousand six. Yeah, two thousand six to twenty fifteen. Vernon K. Okay. This was the show that inspired Family Feud to have its own celebrity version in America. And it was hosted by Al Roker initially. And then it was canceled after a couple of episodes. And then seven years old. Yeah, seven episodes. Actually, six episodes to get to tape seven. I'm, yeah. Uh... And then after seven years, ABC revives Celebrity Family Feud, and it's still a success today. Yep. So, I guess we got to thank Vernon Kay for this. Yes. Of course, we should. Uh, put him above Max Bygrave. You want to put him above Max Bygraves? Ooh. It's, I mean, he's responsible for Celebrity Family Feud in the U in the U.S. Yeah. Makes sense, and he does it. He does that a lot. Brought out Roker, that brought out Roker to host. Mm -hmm. And the, and he does and Vernon K does other game shows too. I think he did one in the U.S., which was Million Dollar Mind Game. Yeah, Million Dollar Mind Game. He had his own game show marathon. I think he did uh one. Did another one in the UK called Golden Balls. Um, I th I think you could be wrong on this because yeah, I could be wrong. Wrong on Golden Balls, Jasper C Carrot. Ah, Jasper. <laughs> Because I know he did another game show after Family Fortunes. Okay, let me see. Um, because I know he did Splash, too. Uh, oh, I found it. Uh, 1,000 Heartbeats. 1,000 Heartbeats. Yeah. He had his own game show marathon in 2007. Yep. Yeah. Again, in the UK. I mean, he and he actually hosted uh, the whole nineteen yards. Wait, what? Oh yeah, yeah. I was thinking. Wait, what? 
<laughs> I was thinking, as soon as you said, it, I was like, wait a minute, that's that's not true. But uh, but yeah, you're right on that one. Yeah. What do you think? So put All him right. above. Put him above Max. Do you think it's a good bet? So we're gonna put him above Max by Graves. And now one more to go. It's the man that was at the helm uh, around twenty twenty round. 2020 round three years ago. Still doing and it today. Actually, I, th I think actually they stopped it, I believe. No, they're still doing it. Oh, they're still doing it. Okay, I thought they stopped it. And the guy, he's a celebrity chef, actually. Uh, Gino Tecampo. Italy's Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Italy's Gordon Ramsay. I mean, all the way from Italy. All the way from Italy. Play go, play go. I mean, better than Andy Collins? Yes. Yeah, way better than Andy Collins. Better than Ann and Deck? Yes. And the, and, wait, wait, wait. wait. Um, what am I thinking? Oh, better than Ma Max Bygraves? Yes. Better than Ann and Deck? I don't know. So, when you want to put Gino De Campo above Anna Deck, but below Vernon K. So above Anna Deck, below Vernon K. Alrighty, so we'll put him there, of course. And Michael, it's time for you to, you know, round the game show. Fu Chang, go ahead. And number one, Les Dennis. Number two, Bob Monkhouse. Number three, I believe, Vernon K. Or Ant and Deck. I believe Vernon, Vernon K. K. Vernon. Uh, oh, Vernon K. Okay. Just making sure. At uh, number four, I think, is Ant and Deck. Yes, Ant and Deck. No, wait. Number four is Gino. Oh, Gino. Yes, Gino. Number five is Ant and Deck. Number six, Number Max Bygraves. And mm -hmm. at that last, Andy Collins. Yep, that's all seven hosts of the family. Fortune's host. And Michael, it's time to close us out, my man. Let's close it out indeed. Thank you so much for watching the Game Show Speed Podcast. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Give us your thoughts on all the topics. Subscribe to Dante Pippen, hit the notification bell. Whenever he does live stream, listen all the times. Check out the Game Show Lounge YouTube channel. We got plenty of shows going on. Also, subscribe to yours truly, Mike Bombardier. And again, uh, we hope uh, Tur Ferguson could be back with us next week. But with that being said, we must now bid each and every one of you adieu. So until we see you next week with another grand episode of the Game Show Speed Podcast, put your hands on your buzzers. Goodbye, Game Show Fanatics. Mwah. And good night. Bang. All right. See y'all, everybody.